My name is Rakesh Rajiv. I run the Game Development Studio in Pune, New York, or Kolwala. We're um, a cross-platform game development company, and that's sort of our entree into the whole HTML5 JavaScript world. So we're gonna, we've got a couple of demos up on that URL, which I'll be re re referencing in, in the talk in the next half an hour. And um, we'll add to it more as a, this this Excel of um, put up the notes from this presentation as well, this, this deck as well. So just a show of hands, how many, uh, how, many um, how many people in the audience are, are have developed a game before? Cool. Okay. How many are how many of those who have developed a game before are planning to develop a game? Are thinking about it? A little more. How many have? Uh, in JavaScript. Yeah? Okay, cool, cool. So I'm hoping to learn from you guys as well. Because uh, what I found is it's, um, it's a bit of a jungle out there. So just to get some definitions, right? What what is uh, what are we talking about? I'm talking about games that run Hello? Okay. So I'm, I'm strictly limiting my um, discussion, my, my talk, to games that run in a standard browser without plugins. So I can't think of I can't think of things like um, uh, Flash, um, and I cannot think of solutions like uh, uh, Unity 3D, which which lets you code in JavaScript, but then um, compiles it down to a platform. All right? So that's one thing. That's the definition of the game that I'm about. It's kind of busted. So the other thing is, um, you know, games itself are such a range. There's such a big range of games out there, right? So what? What games actually run in browsers these days? Well, it looks like some games won't be running in your browser anytime soon. Uh, so Skyrim, it's uh, probably game of the year 2011. And, um, you know, it doesn't run in your browser, it's not going to anytime soon, but definitely, this definitely is, is the goal for a lot of people, it sounds like. Both browser manufacturers as well as um, game studios. So, but you know, this looks like a little little ways away. Um, but then there's also the less complex kind of games like Facebook, Words with Friends, and um, these definitely run in the browser. <coughs> and between these two games, there's like a whole range. So, so it's interesting. It looks like you can do some things with HTML5, like this kind of game, at least this complexity, but uh, somewhere along the way, you're limited by what, what can be done, at least if you want a reach. So that's the hard part, figuring out what is uh, really supported. And uh, I tried to figure this out. I went to this um, HTML5 games conference in uh, San Francisco. Uh, a couple of months ago, and um, it looks like everyone was confused about it. Um, this is what um, the CTO of Zynga Germany, Paul Wickhouse, had to say. And that definitely seemed to be the case. Like, everyone was so excited about HTML5, but uh, now we how to get a viable game out there. By the way, he's a pretty interesting um, thinker in this space, so that's the, that's the zero. Uh, this is the first I think it's the... Can you hear me okay, anyway? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Paul, uh, you know, was 
is really knee deep into this, like a lot of lot of game developers, and uh, is really is really uh, is really having a hard time um, with, uh, with with the existing state of HTML5. In fact, he compared uh, developing uh, for HTML5 to a to a pain machine. This is a uh, Pain machine that gives you a, a bit of an electric current when you when you play Pong, it's like Pong with the with the zap, zapper. So that's what he compared uh, developing HTML5 for games right now. Um, so this this you know this this added to a lot of uh, uh, confusion. I mean, if these guys who are like at the at the forefront of game development are are struggling with it, what does that mean? What are the trends? So that was the basis for uh, our investigation in, into this space um, to, to try it out for a second. There's obviously no way to believe somebody else's experience. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just try and clear up some confusion and also learn from everybody else here. Uh, it's clear that there's lots of different starting points because there's so many different devices, but there's also so many different types of games, uh, which I think ultimately is a great thing because. Um, Complexity is not not a not a must, right? Creativity sort of uh, has has a lot to do with uh, with successful games, and a lot of the successful games that have been around for like thousands of years are actually quite simple and very social. So I'm not. This is not a hands-on session. Half an hour is too too little to like do code walkthroughs and stuff like that. But I'm just gonna share our story of how we how we got to where we are, uh, and and hopefully by that. Uh, you get a, you get a sense of how to get started for for different types of games that, that you might want to develop. Just uh, just to jump back a little bit, so I um, you know I run Codewalla, and at Codewalla what we do is cross-platform game development. So somebody comes to us and says if we want a game, it's got to run on uh, MSN Games, Yahoo Games, uh, Facebook, iPhone, Android, Windows Phone, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Because that's what that's what they need, and then for us, it's like this total nightmare of figuring out how to exactly get that done in a in a in a timely manner or or at all. And depending on the game, you have a bit of a you know you can you can there are tools that help you get more mileage on um, by by uh, getting getting more than one platform at a time. But for the most part, we kind of have to re-implement the game quite a bit. So naturally, this so this is like a day. A daily pain point for us, and I'm sure it is for any uh, game developer or game development studio because uh, ultimately you're in the content business, uh, and you know the more more viewers you have, uh, the more reach you have for your game, the the better chance or uh, of uh, a return on your investment because you probably get one hit out of uh, ten games, right? Uh, so, just a quick note on how we're structured. Structured. Like like the like the studio, you know. So there's people who focus on game design. There's people who focus on production. There's people who focus on the art, on the technology. So it's not just all developers or hackers. Even even within technology, there's people who are doing front end stuff. There's people who are doing back end. Um, you know, depending on the game, you have maybe maybe a lighter front end or a or a heavier <coughs> client side. Um, in terms of technologies that we use, uh, you know, like for all the online stuff, we've been using Flash a lot. Um, you know, for mobile, now that mobile is coming about, we use uh, Corona when we can, when the games are simple. Corona 2D is a, is a good tool. Uh, we also use uh, Unity 3D when, when we need to make a 3D game. That's also cross-platform. I mean, it'll, it'll crunch it down to native on different, different, um, for different, different hardware. So these are some of the tools that we use right now. And sometimes none of these work. You have to just go native, like code in OpenGL, whatnot. Naturally, this this means we need lots of different skill sets in our company. We're about 50 people, and a lot of people pretty much do the same, uh, different versions of the same game. So, you know, needless to say, we're highly motivated to explore, uh, uh, you know, better ways to get cross-platform game development going on. You know, there's lots of uh, lots of challenges. Like I like I mentioned, uh, it's a it's a hits-driven business at the end of the day. Um, you know, there's there's uh, cost and time pressures, as always. But on the other hand, unlike an application, 
that you know your game quality is and game performance just cannot be compromised, right? It's, it's it has to be visually, uh, it can't just be functional. It has to be a, it has to be fun. So it's pushing pushing the, um, the system quite a bit. Yeah. Um, and then on top of that, you know, to, there's there's a big learning curve, right? You have lots of different skills. There's like game, there's all these algorithms for game development. Um, New languages, math, 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 physics, whatnot. So you really want all the tools you can to help because um, uh, otherwise, otherwise, you know, the days of like studios getting years and years to make to make a, a mainstream game, those are those are totally gone. So um, you know, just a just a quick little uh, um, look at the structure of a game program, right? So, so game program, more or less, is pretty much you initialize and you have an update loop uh, during which you get it, you, you get your input and you and you render your screen. Um, if it's if it's a game that has is, is continuously moving, then you have the notion of uh, uh, it, it being timer driven, and you have you have to deal with like uh, keeping a good uh, frame rate up. In other cases, uh, it might just be based on like button clicks and like, events. But still, there's this update loop, and then you terminate, right? But apart from that, so that's like the simplified structure. But apart from that, you really need um, some really good tools and utilities to help you with uh, scene management. Usually, you're making a game with multiple levels. Uh, you know, you a game usually is like uh, got a ton of graphics and sounds and whatnot. You really need toolkits to help you with your asset management. Needless to say, if you're making a multiplayer game or a social social game, you've got to have uh, some way, some some help uh, to to ease your network communication. Lots of games uh, need a very good uh, animation engine. Within animation engines itself, are a whole world. You have um, you know you have your standard tweening type spline based animations, uh, you know uh, motion path based animations. And then you have procedural animations. Uh, physics is pretty much uh, a common expectation in games right now. So we're looking at you know a pretty uh, pretty large amount of code that you really don't want to have to be writing yourself. And 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 thankfully there's lots of lots of tools out there to help you with all of this. Right. Um, any any of all of this has to sit on top of the, any animation framework. Obviously, has to sit on top of a pretty good graphics framework, uh, and that you know, hopefully, the graphics framework is uh, in, the, in in the context of HTML5 is smart enough to deal with the underlying hardware and the underlying you know flavor of HTML5 that you that you have, uh, and can do it for you transparently. So it can switch to H WebGL or um, Canvas or uh, even CSS, as the case may be. Because you really don't know with HTML5, like you know, what your what your end user what your end user has. Audio is a must. It's a big big deal with games, and it's also a big big hole in the HTML5 ecosystem at the moment. Um, but you know, but you get better, right? You're, but at the moment, it's it's definitely a, a pain point. Uh, it's not well supported, and um, you know, some things some things are not just about technology. What we're finding is uh, with audio, for instance. You know, uh, the iPhone browser actually went back and took out took out some audio support. So I don't I don't understand that. I mean, I, I guess I do because they they want to keep uh, the ecosystem more closed. Apple does. So there are these challenges beyond just you know browsers and devices getting better technically. Um, a good a good uh, addition to your game toolkit, game development toolkit are, are things that will help you build uh, you know, typical templates for standard game types, so game packs for different types of games so you can reuse and write your games faster and faster. Uh, and needless to say, nowadays you have, um, you need a lot of back-end services so you can, so you can get a sense of um, um, you know, how people are actually playing your game, not only, not only as, uh, not only to just measure uh, measure usage, but also as a game design technique. So with social games especially, the idea is you get the game out quickly, don't get too fancy about it, get, get all the feedback and through analytics, and then keep tweaking it really, really, really fast, right? That's sort of how modern social game studios are, are set up. They're more like, they're more like web design companies or, or, or web development companies. Uh, the Etc. has all kinds of other package, uh, all kinds of other services which help uh, a game development studio 
be uh, monetization from advertising, offers, this and the other. So all this is to point out that what you, what a game developer, th those of you who have done game development already know this, but those of you who haven't yet, should, I just want you to know that uh, you need a lot of a lot of help, a lot of tools, and that's what you would look for in any solution. So that's um, that's kind of where we came from, and that's what we were uh, looking for also. Um, yeah. So the solutions that we have, like I said, are you know some of them are are you know uh, virtual machine based, like Flash. And some are cross compilers like uh, Unity. <coughs> HTML5 was another solution that popped up to us when we started looking at it. That's a strange exception. Um, that's VM based, but is allowed is okay by the uh, Apple ecosystem. So, you know, and we saw lots of interesting demos. You know, they're very impressive demos with Google I/O and um, other other hacks and whatnot, and some big companies, but. We really didn't know what it took to make one of these. You know, what what about ease of development? What about from, from the from the developer side of things? So, in any case, we couldn't continue with Flash because Flash is not supported. So that was the end of that. And uh, obviously, we couldn't look at look at Unity because it's uh, it's it's you know a plugin based um, environment, plugin based uh, solution. So yeah, so like I said, you know, we started looking at HTML5. Pretty, got a pretty good sense of the landscape, and um, then started looking at the at the solutions. And there's tons. There's all kinds of uh, game development tools and packages out there. Some are some are like hacks, like small little hacks that people have put together on a weekend type of thing. Some are really fancy, uh, and you know, let you make pretty pretty good games even without any programming. You know, a lot of like WYSIWYG, like authoring tool type things. But we couldn't really um, we couldn't really use those because we have, as a game developer, we have like very very specific and high uh, commercial requirements like in terms of performance, the kind of customization we need, the amount of integration we need to do with other systems, and so forth. Right? I mean, here's a list of the ones that we actually looked at. <coughs> I can I can put this up later with the URLs if you want, but. All of these have uh, support for HTML5, they claim. And, and some of them are really awesome, and we, we've used them on other projects. Um, but, but for the most part, not really applicable. The one that, um, you know, the one that we thought was the most interesting was Play In from Google. It's a, it's a game, game abstraction uh, toolkit. So if you, go to, uh, if you go to Google and look for uh, Play N. It's called for play before. Um, you can you can get a sense of what what that does. And we we were really impressed with it because you know the Angry Birds on Chrome Web Store was made with it and whatnot. So we thought, wow, this is like a done deal. They figured it out, and you know it's Google, so the performance and everything is gonna be good. It's gonna be supported, all that. Uh, but when we started using it, we found out that that was completely not true. Uh, first of all, the sound. If that game is not even JavaScript, right? It's Flash. Uh, it really doesn't work on non-desktop environments, which is which is we thought a, a fail. Um, and uh, I think they pretty much had to get the Rovio developers to write that code to make to make Play and actually work to that extent. So seemed like a seemed like a hard, you know, not not exactly the easiest platform to jump into. Further. You had to program everything in Java. It's a GWT-based uh, solution, so that again was a bit of a fail for us. We thought that if you're developing HTML5 in HTML5, then you should be able to code straight in JavaScript itself. But we considered it because you know it's ready. We can get up maybe time to market advantage and so forth. But it was completely closed in terms of extending it. So once we, <coughs> we couldn't extend it, we really couldn't consider it seriously. No closed system can be considered seriously by any game studio because you've always got to connect to, uh, you know, one, some new thing or the other which is out there. And so we looked at Cat, which was a, um, a, you know, a simpler offering, but it was pure JavaScript. It's open source, and so, well, so is Play In, by the way. But uh, 
So CAD is uh, CAD was not deemed to be a gaming framework as such. It was pretty much it's pretty much an animation and graphics uh, framework, I would say. And we found it to be you know reasonably non-obtrusive, very easy to use, plain vanilla JavaScript. So we said, okay, let's try that, and so we made three three games. So I don't have much of a uh, I don't have a good internet connection here, so I recorded I recorded uh, the screen capture. Right? So first, what we did was we took a flash game, an existing flash game, a simple one, and we ported that over. Links, uh, these games you can actually see them from that website. So as you can see, it's a simple memory game made by this company, uh, Lumosity, Lumos Labs, where you just you know remember stuff. And we thought if we can't even port this game to HTML5, then you know it's, it's a fail. And surprisingly, we had a lot of trouble, even though it's such a simple game. Uh, we realized that Flash has really optimized animation engines, uh, has a really optimized animation engine. So even doing things like uh, cubic interpolation and stuff like that was turned out to be a lot of math uh, for, uh, for for your JavaScript runtime. Dealing with big images, something as simple as a big animating water image in the back uh, turned out to be like a, a, you know slow on on a lot of devices, including like an uh, iPad and whatnot. So that was pretty much uh, a, disappo a disappointment. Even even a bit a game with such basic requirements. Uh, you, you, you know, we couldn't really do. So that was one experiment. Um, the other experiment that we had was a slightly more complex game, but still really, really simple in terms of uh, this is a hidden object type game. This again is just a test that we put together in a couple of weeks with some existing graphics and. This, this works fine, it works pretty much on anything, but obviously it's not doing a whole level, hell of a lot. But you know, it's a really popular genre. <coughs> in object games are super popular. I think the most popular game on Facebook that you know bumped uh, Zynga out was something called the Gardens of Time, made by Playdom, which is basically a hidden object game adventure. So that that was that was a that was a, uh, not a fail. We did have problems with audio, obviously, so that wasn't so exciting, but at least graphics-wise, it looked like you know as long as big big images aren't moving around, no problem. Then we decided to uh, try in like pure WebGL, sort of the high end, like what we could do. And uh, we have you know expert uh, OpenGL developers on our team who are also um, Flash developers, so they 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 tried to do a, a, a quick little test and we based it on this. Uh, Happy Tree Friends uh, character. Just a simple avoidance game. So this is all written in uh, straight WebGL. You can see the source and uh, and box 2D for the physics. So it just seemed like the performance was really good. This is obviously a movie, but you can you can check it out on your on your own system. Obviously, it only work on uh, uh, you know computers that have uh, uh, WebGL uh, in supported. So, so cool. So around the end of so around the end of the year, we had um, these three little tests done, and uh, two two were two were with CAT, and one was with uh, um, one was with pure WebGL. So, so you know, I was a little disappointed actually because. Uh, the lowest common denominator seemed even less than I thought. So I was clearly getting too influenced by the um, blogosphere, reading about HTML5. The reality was a little bit even less, right? So, but at least it was it was a it was a check, uh, and and we now had to decide, well, what what do we do? Do we like only support? Do we only make games for uh, the cutting edge browsers? Do we like support everything? And it became clear to us that there's no point really supporting only a, a minority uh, of the of the browsers, right? So we 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 started uh, focusing on reach. We wanted to make uh, our games run on on the biggest range of devices. 
that's supporting HTML5. And that sounds like you know contradiction to the whole quality <coughs> requirement for game development, but um, actually, you know, like I said, some of the games are very simple on the graphics side, but are more complex on the on the maybe not even that complex, but are but are just popular because of game design and creativity. I mean. These are the stats for uh, Word with Words with Friends, right? So there's 18 million people playing it. This is, this is like from a couple of hours ago. So not too bad for a low complexity, asynchronous backend kind of game, which uh, many of you probably play at work. <laughs> uh, so so this is good. You know, we 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 realize that. All right, this is, we're living in a great time where games have become mainstream. I don't think Skyrim has done so well, even though it's a super awesome game. So this is really exciting because even you know it's not about graphics performance; it's that our reach and creativity can give you lots of and, and you know existing games, social, all come together to give you lots of lots of options. So we we're actually uh, pretty pretty excited about that. You know, I mean. Um, this is, this is uh, Mark Pincus, right, Zynga C CEO. And I just like this quote from him, which he, where he says, all of the newer games that we bring out are trying to reduce session times. So his goal is that people should play his games less at, at a given, in one session. Because one of, the, one of the biggest reasons people don't play games is that they say they don't have time. So really, graphics, this, that is all like, secondary compared to time. So having this reach, being able to play your game wherever you are, turns out to be like the highest priority amongst, amongst uh, all everything else. And I guess he knows what he's talking about, right? He just had a $10 billion IPO. So we said, okay, uh, we, we've got our conclusion, so now what do we need to make? And clearly, you know, we're making this for developers, right? We, I mean, as developers, it's, it's important that the development environment be be easy, uh, be be as as good as possible. We're talking about uh, web developers who've been doing web front end stuff. Uh, we're talking about Flash developers who, who are familiar with with developing an action script, that kind of thing. Really, for the front end, not not a lot of um, uh, C or Java type guys. So it's I think I think it's I think for us. We think the, the development environment part has to be in, in, in JavaScript well for it to be, uh, uh, you know, useful for a game studio that's making a high reach game. Needless to say, the front end is is all about having all those tools that lets you do physics and lets you do animation, everything that at a, at a, uh, in a, in a at, at a level that's that satisfies your your game game idea, right? Um, on the for the back end, like if you want to support a game like Words for Friends right now, the front end is simple, but you still need a pretty good <coughs> back end because you're playing with people, playing with multiple people at the same time. There's 18 million of them all playing at the same time anyway, that many sessions. Uh, so pretty high scale back end kind of becomes like a more important thing for your little simple front end to succeed, right? Uh, and, it is, and then of course, social gaming is, is also, apart from the multiplayer aspect of your game, the social aspect then becomes important. So it's all about being creative to make the best of the current environment, as opposed to sort of fighting it and just, you know, uh, making, making a game that looks good in demos and, and, and in uh, conferences. So, based on this, uh, you know, we've, we've decided uh, now to, in fact, with some products around this, around this concept, because the challenges are, are huge, uh, but the opportunity is larger, right? <coughs> and and that's what we're we're going to be we're going to be focusing on. We're taking some of this learning and, and like open sourcing uh, some of the pieces of it and some of the back end pieces. We'll try to make a, a, a service, whatnot. But here are the examples. Here are some of the examples of games made by. Um, Made externally, I, you can see you can see the games we made. Here's a list of some other games uh, that, that we thought are pretty interesting that, that work. Um, not 
again, not not across uh, across the board, but uh, but still do a pretty good job. Right? The, the, the links to the videos as, as well as uh, the the actual site. So, what what does the code really look like for a game like this? So, you, so ideally, this is all totally work in progress, right? So ideally, you want you want it to be as simple as having a good little entry point, having a good framework, uh, which is which is uh, uh, you know got got the notion of a, a scene. Typically, game engines, game frameworks have uh, have the concept of scene and director and actors and that kind of thing. Um, really need to easily add uh, images, buttons. So, so scene management, you know, stuff like that. Creating a container, adding a background image, creating a button, initialization, and then setting that scene. In games. Right, this is a simple roll the dice game. I'll show you. I'll show you. <coughs> So nothing fancy, nothing complex. That's it's got to be like fairly easy and, and look like, say, some flash code or or you know maybe maybe uh, some pretty high level code on, on the uh, on any other platform. So for now, we're building everything on top of Cat, that um, that other uh, engine that I talked about, and we're building. A product that's going to be uh, going to make this easier for all of us internally as, as well as as well as for the community. So I think I'm out of time. So thank you. And, uh, have uh, time for a couple of questions. Uh, what is your opinion on? Uh, wave of new animation tools that are coming out, including you know, from Adobe, where they take your flash code and compile it to HTML5. Yeah. I mean, the performance isn't still there yet, but do you think it'll actually be mainstream someday? You know, flash is uh, the tool of choice right now for game developers. Yeah. And yeah. I'm sure Adobe wants to keep it that way, but do you ever think they'll reach that place where we will be able to have performant, responsive games on the browser built through a compiler or an ID? Yeah, so that was very. The question was, uh, what about the, what about tools that take the content or the animations created in Flash to be able to be used in HTML5? I'm actually a little disappointed in what I've seen so far because I don't understand why. But there are a few tools out there, even from Adobe. I don't know what's what's uh, what's limiting it. But I think what's going to happen is anyway, the tools aren't there yet, right? They're not there yet, and I don't. I'm guessing they'll get better over time, but it doesn't look like Flash. Uh, Adobe as a company is thinking of Flash as a game engine, uh, a truly game engine. So when they want to support exporting from Flash, they want to support like all this other stuff. And really, if you suck that into HTML5, you sometimes don't really want all of that. So it's not it's not optimized as a workflow or a pipeline uh, for for game development. And Really, the flash, flash's uh, um, you know way of doing things, I think, was really optimized for its high CPU talking native uh, uh, animation engine. And you know, when they just, if you can just import the data, the animation data, it's way too heavy for an HTML5 runtime. HTML, you don't have compiled uh, animation engines baked into HTML5. So right now, there's that. Big gap. That was that was our experience. I I don't know what they're going to do in the future. It's not not clear. Where do we go then? HTML we'll five or Flash? So it depends on your context, and that's the other thing. There's such a range of games, and it depends on your project. If you have a project that has to come out in three months, and you only it only has to run on desktops, I think Flash is like a perfect choice. But if you know if it's going to be uh, that you have to get it on a, on more platforms, like on on the on the iOS or, or on any any mobile uh, device, then I would say don't even start with Flash because you're going to have to like rewrite all that code again. 
in HTML5. So for tablets and desktop, HTML5 is best. Yeah. Yeah, so if, you, if you're going to do it in HTML5 for tablet, you might as well do it for desktop as well. And on, on the desktop, um, HTML5 is like super powerful, right? It like does a lot of things. Yeah, uh, leaving the desktop part, for the tablets and smartphones, will, if uh, HTML5 code works still well, will the screen size and the dimension, will still, will that be uh, considered again? Because what we do for iOS or iPhone, if I'm using the same set of graphics for a tablet, it wouldn't match. And general uh, expectation of a user for a mobile device, device is to cover whole of the screen, not like that of a desktop in a browser window. So, will it be again? You will have to the same problem. Yeah, I, I don't think I don't think this uh, HTML5 is going to solve that problem, right? You're still going to have to. Uh, decide how you want to deal with different real estate. Either it's procedural, either your layout is procedural, or you have different assets for uh, different, different size. Yeah. So, so a game uh, framework should should help you with that as well. But there's no nothing in the HTML5 to help you with. But it's still a big savings, right? It's incremental. So, what what are the options you have apart from the HTML5? Other options. Other options are native, right? I don't know the native option. Yeah. yeah. So, so there are tools. There are lots of tools like uh, like Slash. There's Unity, Cocos, uh, sorry, Corona, Game Salad. There's lots of tools that let you program in their environment. Maybe in another language like Lua or uh, you know C Sharp or something. And they but they'll compile it to native. So that big list, there's actually tons of, what we found is that there are tons of products out there that help you, but again, if you want reach, if you want like the maximum number of devices to be enabled, then there's no one good solution other than <coughs> writing it yourself. How about monetization networks are available. For example, I publish a game to, say, uh, Chrome Web App Store. Yeah. How do I monetize? Oh, for monetization, so, so your game is a is part of the browser, right? So you you have access to all the monetization techniques of uh, traditional yeah, web content. For, for example, uh, traditional techniques like access and all these things don't work for uh, applications in game stores. Uh, the app store. Oh, in the app store? Oh, I didn't know that. Huh. Yeah, AdSense you cannot use it. I see. You have to go for some other alternative or otherwise you have to create a game which has to be necessarily sold. And uh, you can use that API or implement using paper or something. Right, right. But so for ads, there is no other alternative. I see. So you can't, so it turns out you can't use AdSense for games in Chrome web store? It's against their policy. Oh, so that's a policy thing. That's interesting. Sounds a little counterintuitive. It's yeah. both from Google, right? <laughs> so, uh, it's not about HTML5, uh, but basically, uh, you have these cross platform uh, mobile development uh, toolkits like Titanium. Do you have any experience with those when it comes to developing games? Not Titanium, but we use, game, we use other frameworks that do the similar thing, which is you, you write in their framework and they compile it down to native. <laughs> claim a lot of performance. Yeah. Phone gap. So it's it's pretty good, but it's limiting because you know I need I need the runtime cannot be this native thing, right? I'm not when I'm trying to make when I'm trying to use JavaScript as a scripting language to make a native game or a native app that works well. Yeah. But they're not somehow giving me highly optimized uh, JavaScript or anything like that, that can be run in a browser. So that's been our focus is, uh, that's been our focus, getting games to run without plugins in a browser. In the browser itself, even on the mobile phone? In yeah, even, even, even on the phone. Because, because you know, like, uh, reach for, for reach, you can't leave out uh, a certain device, just because uh, it doesn't have high performance. But these browser-based games, once uh, if you say the interface on the mobile is going to be the web browser and not a native app, then like are they going to be available offline as well? Like, how does a game ever get paid in such a model? You know, like how do I buy a, a, a browser-based game? 
Just like you buy other web content, I guess. Oh, but then have to be produced the online thing. Yeah, no, not always. I mean, each of them has offline support. And, and what a lot of people do is uh, they bake it into, uh, you know, turn it into a native app also. Yeah, it's just running browser. Because I have never played a game on a mobile browser yet. Yeah. Yeah. Simple games will work. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.